Good morning, folks. Welcome to the Land Tamer Stream live outside of Orlando, Florida, USA. And we're doing multicast. Multicast trees. We're going to paint some happy little multicast trees today, hopefully, if, the, um, if everything goes well. Let me pull up the agenda today. This, by the way, is a background. Wallpaper of the day is nearby. This is from, I want to say this is the Intercoastal Waterway near Daytona, Florida. Um, about, you know, from me, it's about an hour and a half or so. But yeah, looking forward to hopefully going there next weekend. Let's see. Let's pull up our agenda for today, guys. This is what we're going to try to do today. And let me pull up the chat. I had the chat window open somewhere. I'm playing with, you know, never really used this minimize feature in Mac OS. On the, here on the Mac, but I'm going to try to do that more. No, that's not it. Oh, that's just 2017 folder. Okay. Yeah, let me open up the... Maybe it's over here. Open up the chat window. That's okay. We'll just create a new window here, guys. So, yeah, we're going to talk a little bit more about multicast. I study multicast pretty much all day yesterday. And when I, when I say study, I mean I did some labs, um, fin finished out some good labs, and videos, and reading. So I did all that stuff. There's a chat window in case you guys want to shout out. We'll test make sure Nightbot is here. Cool. Yep. So, yeah, I mean, I did, um, okay, so, so far this is what I can, I can recommend. As far as books goes, because uh, I did a good bit of reading, the INE video suggested, I think, three different books and several different links of Cisco documentation that they recommended to read. Um, I found one of those books to be really good. And I've listed it here. In fact, this is one of the um, this is one of the this is a meat chunk for today. If you go to this link, it'll take you to the Google Drive Share, where of course I have this. It's a short list, but to me it's important because you want to know when I'm studying this technology, which books, uh, in particular in Safari books online, should you use. This is not an exhaustive list. This is what I've collected so far. And for multicast so far, this is the go-to book. It's called Inner Domain Multicast Routing Practical Juniper Networks and Cisco System Solutions. So yes, it does cover Cisco and Juniper, which is interesting because it's, you know, in a lot of cases, it seems the implementation is pretty much the same. There are a few subtle differences. But again, uh, as I was telling someone the other day who is considering, uh, you know, uh, a Juniper position, it's like, you know, as long as, you, you know, if you're studying the CCIE protocol, the protocols for the CCIE, those protocols are applicable. They're, they're somewhat universal. I mean, you obviously would have to learn, you know, differences. Um, check my little dashboards here. All right, guys. Uh, one sec. I've got four, four screens going here, so I'm learning to, to navigate these. Got a couple of different things going on. But anyway, yeah, th so this is the book that I, I recommend. Um, and so far, it's been very, very helpful to complement uh, the other resources, which are, of course, the INE videos. And the INE videos have been pretty good in this section, I have to say. I have really uh, enjoyed the these. And they've been very helpful. Um, there, there are some things in the lab that they do not cover, which we're going to have to figure out going forward. But... Um, Anyway, this is out there, and as time goes by, I will backfill it for some of the other technologies. And, of course, going forward, these are the main books I'm going to recommend for each section of the workbook. But, yeah, so reading, uh, videos. Is, in terms of videos, what I watched, and, again, this is still, you know, there's definitely a disconnect here in the videos. I'm going to pull up this list of videos for multicast from the INE material, downloadable material. So, you know, I went through, I finished PIM sparse mode. I finished troubleshooting multicast RPF failures. And I started uh, auto RP. Um, I bl yes, I believe I finished this video well as well, which I did. So it's one, two, three, four, five. 
So I'm halfway through pretty much. Boot BSR, Bootstrap Router, is the next video, and I decided to stop there. But yeah, I spent a lot of time. As you can see, that's three, four hours or so just to watching videos. And then, of course, reading um, in the book, you know, Juniper and Cisco Networks, Multicast Routing. Uh, really good stuff. And uh, I think I'm going to go back later as well and watch the rest of Denise Fishburne's video, which is mentioned in yesterday's or day before when I started. Uh, is mentioned there. Uh, great video. Actually, I need to post that here because that may have been on the video got deleted because of the audio problems. So I'm going to go over here in Discord. Of course, we keep all these links in Discord. So, and other people contribute good links. Uh, let's see. Yeah, here it is. Pre recorded. Yeah, we're going to post that here because that this one is really helpful. Um, I also put the RFC, the applicable RFC down here. So we've got several things in the meat chunk se section here going on. Um, and folks, if you want access to this, of course, I try to remember to put all the links in the, <clears throat> in the post in Twitch, which goes away. But this, uh, these agendas, each one is posted uh, publicly shared in the Google Drive share, if you ever want to get to these. And they're in Discord. So plenty of information at your fingertips, folks. Uh, this is uh, the Cisco Live multicast troubleshooting presentation. And this is Denise Fish Fishburne. This actually, folks, and I know I mentioned this before, but this actually helped things really start to click, to be honest. This link right here. So if you've not watched this video, I highly recommend it. And everyone else and Router Gods, of course, is recommending this as well. So good stuff. Um, what else we got going on? Yeah, so Cisco Live Barcelona is kicking off. And we're already seeing a lot going on there. Um, man, I would have loved, I mean, granted, this year... Cisco Live, and that's one of the vlog topics here. Cisco Live, this, you know, will probably be my first year. It looks like everything's lining up where I'll be able to go to Cisco Live Orlando in June. But man, wouldn't it be awesome to attend something like that in Barcelona? <clears throat> but we got a few people who are subscribed to the, uh, the Land Tamer server, Discord server, who... Um, you know, regular contributors, and some of them are in uh, Cisco Live Barcelona, including we've already started to see some updates, some Twitter posts, which are great. If you're not following Dimitri on Twitter, you should be. Um, he's actually posting some updates, and he, of course, is, I think, a two-time CCIE and is also um, active on social media and active with the community, and he is currently involved in a number of projects related to programmability, which is my next thing. So I'm following what he's doing with Keen Interest and recommend you do the same. Uh, what else we got besides vlog topics, meat chunks? Okay, that's it. So whip cracking. Um, let's talk about PIM dense sparse mode. So we've done so far PIM dense mode. We've done PIM sparse mode. Now we're moving on to PIM dense sparse which is critical, as I understand it, for using, or can be critical for using auto RP. <clears throat> you think, why would I ever run this? Uh, there were actually some good, and this is still kind of eluding me, folks, uh, that is use cases. Granted, for me, right now, multicast is brand new. <clears throat> Excuse me. Brand new technology. I'm really enjoying learning about it, which I do. I'm a nerd to learn, yeah. I'm front, sit front row of the class, you know, raising my hand, um, that kind of student, but I, I just love it. And I'm trying to think now of, I, I know at least in my career, this has never really come up for me, uh, except for there are a couple of instances where I was asked, can you do multicast? I'm like, no, I have not. I can try, but I have not learned that yet. And in particular, it had to do with several apple related um applications usually to do with apple tv or something multimedia uh, i know we had some schools that had um you know 
pretty much they had a laptop per student kind of thing and of course a lot of those a lot of the educational market um at least in the private school sector uh there are a lot of max in use even in public schools and you know you have these applications that come out and some of them were dependent on multicast now a lot of these technologies have workarounds if you're not using multicast unfortunately if you don't have multicast in your network or do not support it they typically that typically means that you must run uh, everything in the same broadcast domain so some of these applications will um I, I'm pretty sure the designers understand that there's not a lot of networks, especially in particular small networks or smaller enterprises where multicast uh, or even larger enterprises, um, multiple sites may not, they may not have support for multicast built in or may not have it configured and may not support it. So some of them will fall back to broadcast for very small. Obviously that does not scale. Um, I've seen a particular... Uh, Mac or Apple related uh, multimedia applications where yes I've seen them installed in broadcast domains everything has to be on the same VLAN um, that can get tricky if you have wired and wireless uh, in particular if you have wireless um, implementations where you're using controllers and you, your APs do not support local switching or you have not configured them to support local switching um, or your controllers do not yet support local switching, that can be a challenge. I have seen that. And I think in a lot of those cases, those would be great use cases for multicast, but I would love to hear about more. Um, again, I'm learning the, the protocols and how they work, and any engineer naturally while you're doing this, trying to think your brain's running, well, what, how would this be used? Uh, what applications are using this, both in enterprise and on the internet and in service provider networks? So I would love to hear more about that if you got experience with multicast. Um, I know Music on Hold was a very early implementation uh, application use case. And um, I have seen it in, I have seen, of course, Music on Hold issues before in production. And a lot of times I think where it's implemented is um, sometimes it's done uh, broadcast. So I, I don't know. I'd love to hear your feedback on that. But yeah, we're going to die. We're going to continue grinding away here. <clears throat> Not sure what's wrong with my voice here this morning, but we are doing first lab. And I've got several lined up, hopefully. We'll see how far we get. But this is for PIM dense sparse mode. And let's go ahead and get ready to do that. So we're going to pull up our requirements doc and configs. And we're going to type out our requirements for our first lab over here. We've already got everything running. I've got viral. Um, the topology for today is initial.multicast. This is the INE topology that's available. Uh, if you want to see it yourself, um, you know, you can see the links. I think if, uh, does that work? Uh, shoot, I need to see. Yeah. By the way, that's how that works, Nightbot. This is mainly for my convenience, guys. It's Nightbot stuff. We're not a big enough channel yet to be using a lot of this. But uh, I think there is... Oh, yeah, INE. So, type star INE. You can see uh, the diagrams and the GitHub files. This is where I get my lab topologies for viral. Is I just download them right off the internet each time I need them. Um, so, we've got the initial multicast topology loaded. Uh, Ten routers, of course. And if you're not familiar with it, we're going to go and pull it up anyway. This is the topology we've been working with. And again, this is INE. It's publicly available. That link there. So, yeah, we may be channeling some Bob Ross today to build some happy little trees. This is definitely a little tree. Uh, yesterday when we worked with this, we were doing a rendezvous point here um at router five i believe um but yeah this was for our sparse mode labs and we just built a little happy little tree here and we're going to do that today for dense sparse the requirements for this lab are as follows and standard disclaimer here guys this is not a lab i design i'm working out of the INA workbook which is linked below and if you want to do this lab yourself definitely go buy their workbook it's 2.99 
uh, before discounts. Um, I'm just going to paraphrase it in the workbook. I don't show you that here on sc on, on stream. If you if you really want to do this, that's what you need. Um, but we're going to do the lab call PIM uh, sparse. Excuse me, sparse dense mode. And the requirements are as follows. <clears throat> So we want to enable it, same topology, router 6 through router 10. Um, enable sparse dense. Uh, do not enable, not enable on DMVPN links, which we won't do. Um, statically configure router 5's loopback. as RP for groups in the range 224000 slash 8. Okay, cool. We're going to be on a range. And what else? Configure our tens. GI110 interface to join groups 2410101010 and 2390001. Ensure R6 can send to both groups. Okay, that's cool. Need some water here, folks. I got a little bit of coffee left. Maybe that'll help. So that's interesting. Yeah, I, I saw this in the videos, and the videos talked about, um, you know, running in both modes and using a range value so this is cool we'll get a chance to do this will be my first opportunity to do this in this lab so i think what happens is if i understand this correctly uh when you configure uh sparse dense or dense sparse i don't know i forget which way it's worded in the uh configuration uh you specify a range or a rendezvous point now this is a manual configuration and um, so here's what, here, these are my expectations, right? And in this case, we're doing not auto RP, but we're doing a manual RP using a particular range. And that will be 224.00 slash 8. Um, and I believe we use wildcard masking in this command mode. Manual RP is in a particular range. All others basically fall back to not using a rendezvous point. And I guess the protocol assumes that there's no rendezvous point defined, then we will revert to dense mode. That's my assumption. So 224000 slash uh, eight. Let's, let's think about that one here. That's gonna be a 198 or 128. 192, 224. And we're going to do a slash 8. So this is uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Oh, okay. So that's the whole range, right? Um, that's right along the boundary for a class, quote unquote, class A. So that's going to be easy. We're, uh, I think it's going to be. Yes, it'll be 0 0.205, 205, 205 would be the mask. Easy. So it'll be 224,000. And the mask will be that, the wildcard mask. Thank you, Ani, for making that easy, I guess. Thank you. So let's look at our, um, this will be first time for me. I have seen this in videos, but I really should reference the documentation. And I'm pretty sure I know, I know where we need to go. That would be in the configuration guide. And IP multicast, configuration live, uh, PIM, configuration live guide. I believe configure basic IP multicast. Yeah. A lot of what we've done so far is in this, this document. Configuration examples. And we're going to do... Let's see if they have one, BSR, while well, they jump right into sparse mode with a single static RP, bidirectional. So they don't really have one for dense sparse, but I feel like it's, 
it's going to f- going to follow essentially we are configuring this sparse mode with not without rrp uh where did our example go how to configure basic yeah i want to configure sparse mode with auto rp i don't want auto rp Sorry, I'm not up to snuff yet, guys. I just need the simple stuff. Auto RP, BSR static RPO review. A single argument for multiple groups that are defined by an access list. Yes, if no RP is configured for group, the router treats the group as dense mode. That's what we want. We can't override this, which is interesting. No IP PIM, DM fallback. It's good to know. Um, if dynamic or use together and there is the RP address configure a static group, we'll take precedence. With the IP PIM RP address override command. Um, unfortunately, they're not going to show us. That's just an overview. I want the configuration. Yeah. This is what we want, okay. Now, why would they do that in this order? So if, if I go to this document, right? And I look at configuration examples. In my head, I'm thinking we're going to go um, easy to hard. So the easiest is down here. It must be going to comp from common, most common to least common. I don't know. I don't think so, though, looking at it. Let's just put it in a random order because it's Cisco documentation and we don't want to make it easy. Rant over, sorry. Um, anyway. All right, so this is essentially what we want to do. The following example sets the R PIM RP address to one specific for the Now, this part does not make any sense. Here's an access list. And here I'm going to reference the access list. Oh, wait. No, I'm not. Um, yeah, that makes absolutely no sense. Let me go back to that. <clears throat> uh, IP routing, um, basic, configuration examples. The following example sets the PIM RP address. How is that an example of that? All right, I guess we're going to have to go to the command reference. You folks, I got to turn the fan on. It's starting to get a little warm.
There we go. The struggler is real, guys. The struggle is definitely real on this documentation. I feel like Cisco went into sparse mode when they decided to document this stuff. Documentation sparse mode. Hashtag. <laughs> Uh, I be multicast Pim. All you can do is laugh, people. All you can do is laugh. Yeah, we want to. Sorry, we want to go get distracted. We want to go to the command reference. And IP multicast. And this command in particular is IP Pim. Uh, RP address. Uh, do I not know how to spell? I don't know my alphabet, guys. Sorry. Okay, IP PIM, RP address. Okay, this is where we can put an access list. I don't see an access list here. How is that an example of using an access list? Um, yeah, that's, that's an error. The trust level of the Cisco documentation is not very high. All right, to statically configure the address of PAM rendezvous point for multicast, use an IP PAM RP address command. Okay. So the way this works, IP PAM, RP address, RP address, we have override and binder. Okay. IP address of the RP to be used for the static group to RP mapping. This unicast address. And then access list, number or name of a standard that defines the multipass groups to be statically mapped to the RP, right. Okay, so we need to create a basic access list. That's why we use wildcard mask, right? So we're going to have, for example, see, that should have a one there, but it doesn't. People. Um, so we're going to have, essentially, uh, let's go ahead and put this over here. Let's put it in our config. Because this is going to be configured, really, on all the routers, right? So router six, for example. We're going to say um, access list one and two two four zero 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 two five two five two five and then underneath the interface no this is not interface level configuration that's right we say ip pim rp address and what does it say say configure loopback zero so 150.1.5.5 and access list one so all you had to do with Cisco Docs is put a one there to, uh, you know, relieve my, um, we're going to do a snapshot because, you know, there aren't enough Cisco Docs CD rants out there. So we're going to keep the cause alive. And, you know. All right. So I think that's really the magic right there is the and that's the new element here for this lab uh we're gonna move this off to the side though or shimmy it down there and go ahead and configure our routers so router six ip multicast routing first of all and foremost and then we want to enable it on the interfaces that we need so for router six it's going to be just Think router six or ten, yeah. Interface GI zero one one forty six. Oh, this can go up here. Actually, all this can go up here is fine. Interface GI zero one forty six, and we're gonna say um, IP PIM, and is it sparse dense? How's that worded? Let's go to the documentation. Let's pull that back up. Is it sparse dense or dense sparse? Or bo do both work? Let's go back up. So we've got IP PIM.
And what am I missing? Is it not IPPIM? Yeah, sparse mode, sparse dense mode. Okay. So it's dense mode, sparse mode, sparse dense mode. Wow, we have not explored these yet. There's route map, there's a list, and there's passive. Interesting. Okay, we'll get to those, I guess. So we're going to say IPPIM sparse dense mode. And what else? Okay, I think that's it here. And then what else we need on router uh, four? We could take all this. Actually, this as well. Same interface. And interface GI0145 as well. Put them there. All right, so that's this interface and this interface. Yep, boom, boom. Then we go down to router five. Just follow the tree here. This is all going to be the same, um, except we need a command for it to be the rendezvous point. Uh, I think it's the same, though. Yeah, it is the same. And we're going to do J0145 and J0158. And router eight, you do have to configure it on every interface, but at least in this case, it's not too many and it's the same command everywhere. And 108, and then we're gonna do, the, oh, I need to do it on the loopback too. Can't forget that. Interface L0. I could probably just do sparse mode on the loop back, but we're going to leave it at that. And then router 10. Let's see. It will be that interface and J0110. And on this one, we're going to do IP, IGMP, and it's group, right? IP, IGMP, group. Now, is that going to be under this command reference? I don't know. Isn't there an IGMP? No, IP, IGMP. Join group. Group address, source address. Okay, so that must be for source specific, which we're not there yet. Join group, and it's going to have two. Um, they are 224, 10, 10, 10. And can we do multiple here? How does that, I've never done, I haven't done this yet. Yeah, I think it's an individual statement for each. What if we could do a range? I guess we can. Well, we're going to do 239001. Okay. That's our configuration, folks. Uh, where do I want to capture? Do I need to capture anything here? I don't think so. Yeah, we, we've seen all these packets before, as far as I can tell. So let's go to, let's open up our terminals. Router one, two, three, four, five, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And let's see, router one, we need actually router, we'll start in order, router six. And copy paste. Okay, IP access list one. Uh, okay. Look at this, guys. So it doesn't like this format. Um, access list one, 
permit. Sorry. Okay, we gotta fix that. So we're going to do a search replace here. I need to learn how to do this and this. I mean, I do this all the time in putty. Uh, that's option key, right? Option, command, F. Yes. Search this. Um, actually, we need to do access list one. We need to replace it with. Okay, done. All right, router four. Moving right along. All right, is that in place? Oh, there's something wrong here as well. Interface J0 146, 140, IP PIM, sparse, dense mode. Hmm. Is that what was in the documentation? All right, this is another thing that uh, kind of gets my goat here. As you can see, this is not located here. IPPIM, sparse dense mode. It's a subset of the command IPPIM. I guess those others are, others are not. Okay, it's sparse. So I missed this hyphen mode. All right, my, that's my bad. Can't blame Cisco documentation this time. Death by hyphens, guys. Death by hyphenation. So let's go back. We fixed, actually, we need to do this as a search replace reference. And. Place all. Done. Uh, did it not do it? No, it did not. Uh, these are basic computing functions, guys. What's going on here? Replace with IPN sparse. Replace, 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 replace. Okay. Whew. Router four. Good. All right, yeah, we should see neighbors coming up. We should see DR change. That's good. All good stuff. Okay, boom, boom, boom. Yep, line protocol. All right, create these tunnels, right? Those are tunnels for RP addresses. Okay, good, and then router 10. All right, good stuff. So, All right, our expectations. Um, if we did this right, uh, I'm expecting ping to work. That doesn't mean that we did it right, but at least it will build the trees. So let's just try this. Ping 224-10-10-10. And see if we get a response. And we do. Nice. 
All right, first let's check on the sparse mode configuration. And what we want to see is our routers. Actually, let's do a long repeat on this. We don't care because we're not we're not doing packet captures. And these things tend to time out uh, pretty quick before we can check them. So let's follow the tree. First of all, we want to follow the... I like to start by following the reverse path tree, right? So in this particular case, we should have a tree. Um, let me map this out, see if I get this right. Um, we should have, for 2, 2, 4, 10, 10, 10, this falls in that range of sparse mode configurations. So we should have a tree here, and that is going to be, let's change the color. Um, let me think about this. This is going to be a star comma G tree. This is going to be our, uh, we should have two trees, really. We have our um, shared tree. Now, don't, I forget how, there's SPT, which is shortest path tree, and I think the other one is typically designated as um, shared tree, SHT, maybe? No, it's not that. Um, what is that called in the terminology? Let, let's go to our um, book, Safari Books. Copyright, I guess. I'm not going to really show this on the screen. I might show little glances, but... Okay, yeah, this is the cover of this book, Interdomain Multicast Routing. Great book so far, guys. I really like it. Um, and I'm going to do a search yeah, within this book for shared tree. And here they call it an RP tree. or RPT, rendezvous point tree. Okay, I like that. I've seen it referred to as something different in INE videos, but for now we're gonna go with this. So we should have two trees. Um, we should have the RPT, which is star comma G, and we'll have the shared path, uh, shortest path tree, which will be S comma G, right? So let's look in the routing table. Show IP in route. Okay, here we go. So this is star comma G or two two four ten ten ten. And then the what are the flags here? S J C L sparse. Good. J is join SPT, yes. Um T is man, there are a lot of flags here. SPT bit set. SPT bit set. Oh, that's down here. Yeah. S, J, C, and L. Somehow it seems like it's probably going to be important to know what these are. S, J, join SPT. Ah, right, right. So I'm allowed to join the shortest path tree. I guess here is where in the share in the rendezvous RPT is where you can set that to allow that join or not, right? So here it's saying we can. And SJCL is going to be C is connected, I think. And L is local, right? SJCL. And the incoming interface, chat 108, right? And the outgoing is J0110, right? Okay, good. RPF neighbor 155.1.108.8, which is right, connected and local. Okay. Now let's look at the S comma G route. And there it is. Flags LJT, local, join SPT, and T is, is SPT bit set. So this is the shortest path tree. And it just so happens to use the same... Um, now, this does not say sparse.
Doesn't say sparse here, but for the RPT it does. I don't know, know if that has any significance or not. Uh, we'll see. We'll see. Um, this, by the way, is dense. Even though we're not really sending traffic yet, uh, I guess we could. I will leave it at that for now. All right, so we follow the tree. That looks good. And then let's go to router 8. I want to get all the way up to the rendezvous point. Um, show... IPM route and what can we do here can we do oh that works how do we specify let's see okay nice so this just shows us for the Star comma G, same. And neighbor. Does it show the rendezvous point here? It does. Yep, 150.155, which is good. Flags is uh, S, sparse. Uh, the IAL incoming interface list is GI0158, RPF neighbor, outgoing interface list, 1108. Yep. And then the source, so far right now, we're the same. I suspect this path is going to be the same all the way up, and it will be because there's only a really one trunk in this tree. And notice the flags here, sparse. This flag has T, which is SPT bit set. So, again, the same IL and OIL. Okay, so far so good. Now let's go to router 5 and see what this shows. Show IPM route 2241010.10. We still have both, but this goes to null because this is where the tree, um, this is where the tree, the RPT starts. And it is sparse. Neighbor zero, 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 right. Outgoing list, yep. Uh, now we're continuing the SPT here. This has got the, the SPT bit set. Incoming and outgoing. And then if we go to router 4, I notice that this will be pruned, right? This, this is stopped. And then, of course, this looks correct. But let me think about this one now. So the star comma G means do we have a um, yeah so this is starting the star comma G also goes this way doesn't it but towards the other way. So it's going this way. Up to here, star comma G is this way. Yeah, it goes, it's going towards the rendezvous point. So any listener, or any receiver, I should say, is going to come from that direction. So we're going to listen incoming on this interface. Makes sense. But the shortest path tree still continues all the way back up to the center, right? So we should see that. We see that for router 4. If we go back up to router uh, 6, let's see what his looks like. Looks like. Try PM route uh, 224, 10, 10, 10. Yeah, outgoing is null, but incoming is, uh, and outgoing is null for the sender because this is him right he is the neighbor and we're going to get into pft let's see what that means what is p pruned yeah yeah we're not going to announce that um 
Oh, it's is it in pro mode because I'm no longer sending? Hmm. Can I connect twice to the same router? Tell them that. I cannot, but there's another. All right, this is a cool viral thing we're going to just look at for a second. So I already have a connection here, but if I go to viral, router 6 should have two. Yes. Okay, so I can also connect on Telnet 1013. I don't know why I've never tried this before now. It works. What? No password set? So it doesn't really let me connect on that interface. Hmm. So is it set to prune now in router 4? It was not set to prune before. It's still not. Okay, that's not a temporary condition. So even though we're no longer pinging, I guess it's just set to prune. We're not going to advertise this. Okay. Now this will time out. Uh, I think if I do show, uh, how do we see that? Show. Let's see the timers. There they are. They're right there. Clear IP. Not found. Right. So now if we go to router four. It's still there until his timers disappear. Now this is set to prune. Was it set to that before? Yeah, I guess I'm not altogether clear on the prune flag and what that means. Um, so if we do, if we could do some more pings. Still set to prune. Pruned. Yeah, we need to look into that some more. Definitely, just so we understand that. All right, but this essentially works uh, for sparse mode. Now we want to generate some pings for our other... Um, requirement which is 239001 now this should be outside the scope of what is configured for a rendezvous point so if we send this this should be pure dense mode all the way down let's do a, a ping now ping 239001 repeat yeah we're getting a reply from router 10 which is, which we should and if we look at the routing, we should see dense mode, yeah, DCL. So, yeah, DCL and then LT, local, what is T? SPT bit set, yeah. And there's no rendezvous point for this one, right? So it looks like our configuration worked. Show IPM route. Let's compare the these with 239001. Uh, let's, I didn't really want that. All right, so let's do side by side here. Oops, got a message. I have notifications turned off, guys, if you, uh, Oh, interesting. Okay, so 
Working with Tony E on some labbing anomalies that he's seeing with um, the auto RP. So when we get to those, uh, he's provided some a zip file showing some of the errors that he has been getting. So uh, there it is. So when we get to that auto RP, which may be today, it'd be great if it was today. We'll be able to compare. He's he's running a even G Gen S3 and something else, I think. So we'll be able to compare uh, how viral does with that in comparison. All right, so I want to compare these two routes. Uh, one is sparse mode. And this one is dense mode. So a couple things should stand out right away, the theoretically, right? Uh, let's do this in, what's my other text editor that I haven't used in eons? Uh, text Wrangler, yeah. Yeah, no telling what's going to come up. Okay, so let's compare these two. So we've got running in the same routers. We could see them at the same time, really, if we wanted to. Uh, in fact, let's just for grins, let's do that. Over here on router four, ping two three uh two two four ten ten ten. Yeah. Show IPM route. Yeah, that's even easier, right? Uh clear IP. Let's time those out and then do a show IPM route so we can see just what we have going now. So we've still got this one running. Hmm, so I've got Why do I have two for router four? Anyway, let's focus on the differences here. So sparse mode, we can see we have, of course, um, the RP here is, is an actual address, and an RP here is blank. And again, this is on the star comma G because this is the RPT tree, right? We're not going to have a rendezvous point on the S comma G. Since we're using the uh, SPT, shortest path tree, uh, flags S, flags D. We expect that difference, right? Uh, but a lot of the rest of this will be the same. In fact, when it says, when it's showing you here the interface, it's showing you what the interface is configured for, forward sparse dense. Not necessarily that this particular tree is uh, in that mode. Uh, what else do we see? It's curious that it says this is stopped. Now we are actively pinging 239001, I think. Are we still doing that? Yeah. So we're actively pinging, but notice that it's basically shut down this tree, hasn't it? We're not using this tree right now for traffic. Assuming that's what that means. Now we've got two timers here. Um, let's look those up. Let's see if uh, this will tell us what those timers mean. Oh, you're so hard to navigate. So we're doing show IP. Hmm, is it going to show us here? Show IP M route. Please tell me how it is. Yes. So when we do show IP M route here. Please tell us what these timers mean.
optional filter display only related for by the type okay we're not okay timers uptime and expires up for one second and exp expiration time is it has already expired basically and it does that it looks like for the um yeah so when it, i guess is it doing this when it switches from rpt to spt maybe so because all these timers are one second stopped But on this one, the timer is um, uptime expires. Does this show me that here? It does. I didn't need to go to the documentation. Interface next top of VCD state mode. Yeah, so stopped. So we're not outgoing here. So it looks like it's on sort of a three minute timer, right? Once traffic stops coming in after three minutes, this will time out. And since we're not using the RPT, this has already stopped. That probably happens immediately, I would imagine. Let's do this. Let's clear out. Let's just verify that. Let's, let's stop all the traffic. And we'll stop the traffic on router six. And now let's go to router 10. We're going to clear our routes. Show IPM route. So now all we have is a start. Now these timers start, don't they? Interesting. So it's it's almost seems like a train track, right? You switch from one track to the other, and the timers seem to correspond to that. So as soon as the S comma G tree traffic shuts down our timers to the s comma g or the star comma g start they kick off again two seconds yeah for three minutes all right let's see if this is still the case we should still have okay we got a new follower the the truck old man thanks uh appreciate the follow Happy to have you. But yeah, it looks like uh, we've gone to... So that makes a lot of sense, doesn't it? Let's start a ping again and watch the timers flip for just 224, 10, 10, 10. So if we go here now, actually let's do 224, 10, 10, 10. Yeah, stop. This timer stops, boom. We make an immediate transition um and this timer starts four seconds with a three minute expiration timer makes perfect sense i love it sjcl uh sparse l is local c is connected j is join spt right good yeah i'd like to see how those messages occur when they when we transition let's do that uh, I'm going to do a capture on router 10 because I want to see what it sends. Like, I imagine it sends a prune. I want to see that transition and what it looks like at a packet level. So let's do a traffic capture here. And create. I imagine these are going to be IGMP messages. IGMP is like protocol number, IGMP1 is like protocol number 2 or something. I'm not sure what IGMP protocol 10 is. So now if we do clear IPM route star, show IPM route. Okay, all we have is, is star comma G's. Now we're going to do a ping. We get a response. Let's uh, download the capture. 
and see what we have. Okay, so all we really want, I think, is IGMP or PIM. Okay. Interesting. So we have a join prune. A join prune, which is a PIM message type 3. And this is coming from router 8. No, that's router 10. That's router 10. And he's sending to 24013. And he is saying, I am joining this group. Ah, okay. Okay. This is a join. Then we got hellos. Uh, what were these messages? This is a membership report. I think these are periodic as well, 224.10.10. This IGMP type 2, what protocol number is this? This is protocol number 2. Okay. Membership report, simple, simple, 224.10.10.10. Uh, then he also says, I'm also a member of, these must be just periodic um, kind of maintenance. Uh, here we have a query. IGMP query, which is uh, protocol to router alert. Router alert, router alert. Router shall examine packet. Uh, you know what? I want to get um, I want to get one of those applications that will do voice to text and read read out loud a Wireshark uh, capture in a robot voice. That's what I want. Life goals hashtag. A membership query. So this is IGMP message, uh, IGMP protocol, protocol number two, version two, type is a membership query. What are you a member of? Yeah, and that's coming from router eight towards router 10. And this is router five, right? All right, here's another join prune. These are like whited out. And this is interesting. So this is a PIM, which is protocol 103. Not that I'm going to remember any of these. But this is a PIM join prune. Upstream neighbor is router 5. Old time is 210. And this is a join. SWR. I don't know what that means. So this is basically the, this is probably just a periodic message as well. Yeah, he's just saying I'm a member of 224.10.10. Over and over, okay. So there's no really prune message here going on here. I would imagine that the prune would happen after a timer expires. Let's see if that happens. Um, what is the, let's, let's kill this, this, uh, all right, we already killed the ping. So at some point we should see a prune of this. All right, we've got uh, 20 seconds left on this timer. Let's wait for this timer to uh, drop. And then we're going to see, we should, I imagine, see a prune message in our capture. So let's clean that up. Uh, we'll clean up this PCAP, move that.
Okay, the timer now should be expired, and it is. All right, so I would imagine we see a prune message now. Uh, towards the end, this would be IGMP or PIM, yes. Okay, here we go. This looks like we're flushing something out, doesn't it? Flushing the toilet. That's a join. Let's go to the very bottom. This hello, join prune. PIM. That is a join. Join. I'd like to capture one of these prunes. Show me a prune. This hello prune. Hungry for prunes, people. Prunes actually taste pretty good. Give me a prune. What if it's just, uh, yeah, I really just need to see. Now these are PIM. Yeah, PIM is what sends the prune message, PIM. Are we not in season for prunes? Is this what's going on? Where are my prunes? Where are my prunes at? Wow, we've got none there. Uh, let's just wait a second. I guess... Um, oh, I'll, I bet I know how to do it. Uh, let's do this. Show run interface J zero one ten. Okay, I bet this does it. Interface J zero one ten. Uh, no IGMP join group two three uh, two two four ten ten ten. Uh, what did I do wrong here? Uh, tell me what is happening. What I want to do is this. For your terminal. And... No, IGMP. And no this. Okay, All right now we should see, I would imagine, a prune message. Although that was an IGMP configuration. M. Go to the very bottom. There it is, finally. We finally have a pr our prune message. Joins would be here, zero prunes. I guess you could do two and one, but there we have it. These are the prunes that you've been looking for. Okay. Good deal. We're not going to really save that cap. Um,
Well, I think we're ready to kind of check on this and see what the lab key says. I'm feeling like we're we're good on this lab. Permit, yep. IP access list standard, right? They did a named list, which is fine. Uh, permit. Yeah. Uh, for verification, did the pings. This show IPM routes. Excuse me. And they ping the other group and the show IPM routes and all good. All right, next lab, guys. We're going to mark that one off. That was a good lab. Uh, we're going to go to PIM assert. Now, this has not really been covered in the videos that I'm aware of too much. Um, so we're going to do what we can. But the requirements for this lab is uh, PIM dense mode. So routers 6 through 10 path is PIM dense mode. And tunnel 10 interface. Okay, between router 1 and router 5, T10 interface, we want PIM dense mode. That's new. Okay, ensure R1 is always elected via PIM to flood traffic to VLAN 146 segment. Okay. Use one static in route to fix underlying RPF issues. It's kind of two labs in one, guys, I think. Uh, for testing, join R6's L0 to 239666. Ensure R10 can send packets to it. Okay. So we're going to change here. First of all, we're going to remove this. And we're going to remove this. And we're going to change this to IPPIM dense hyphen mode, I think is the configuration for that. Um, so let me do that. No access list of one replace all. Oh man. Okay, I'm learning how this works. No, no, no. And just be no. Replace all. Done. Okay, no access list. Oh, we want no IPPMRP. So we're going to replace this with that, replace all. Oh, we didn't have to do that one. Okay, and then IPPIM, we're going to replace all these with IPPIM dense mode. Okay, what else? Uh, we want to enable it. Okay, so we need to introduce router 5 to this and 1 to a different configuration. Uh, first of all, we want, so we're expanding our, we're expanding this here. Let's just do a new drawing. We're going to re-download this, guys. We're going to pull down I need topology. Yeah. Yep. 
and we're gonna edit it. Move that down. And where did you go? This one right here, right? Multicast. All right, so this time, we're gonna do this. Oh, that's not right. We're actually gonna go over the tunnel. We're gonna have a tunnel here. And there's gonna be a tunnel interface here. It's tunnel 10. And for this segment, I believe the assert is just to assure that uh, router one becomes a designated router on this segment. Okay, that's the basic idea here. So what we're gonna do is, let's see, we need to put on router one, we're gonna say all of this, And interface GI01146 IP PIM dense mode. Interface T10 IP PIM dense mode. Um, what else? IP multicast routing. Yep, we got that. Okay, good. And then router 5. We're going to modify and we're going to include. Interface T10, IP PIM dense mode. Um, okay, so apparently this is gonna give us some sort of issue. I'm not sure what that is. Use one static in route to fix underlying RPF issues. Ensure router is always selected. Okay, so what's gonna happen is if we say that, if we do an assert here, then that means that um, he is going to be elected as the incoming interface. Well, actually, we're going to be going this way, aren't we? Yeah. So he'll be elected for this group um, when, who's the sender? When R10 is the sender, then he'll be elected as the, uh, the this will be the outgoing interface from around router six's point of view, but he will assert to be the incoming interface, the designated router for this segment. So he'll go from here to here, he'll be the next hop in other words. And then what will happen is he will choose tunnel 10 Based on the IGMP, uh, the next hop to router five will be this way. Which is fine um, for the RPF. I think the RPF is, gonna, is going to be just fine. For sending, it's gonna come from router four. So we're gonna have, uh, let me think about what the implications to this are. So the SPT in dense mode is going to be this way. Because he's going to say for router, to get to router 6, this is faster. So it's going to come to router 4. And 4 is going to send to 6. So that might cause a problem here with router 6 as far as the uh, outgoing interface Because I think what router four will do, oh, router four is gonna prune here, isn't he? He's gonna expect this will be incoming, this will be outgoing. But if router one asserts, 
then he's probably going to prune here. I think that's what's going to happen. Then we, our traffic is not going to get here. Um, let's see. Let's go ahead and do all this configuration before we send any traffic. And before doing the assertion, as a matter of fact, let's do that. So let's go to router one. Yes, we're not doing an assert yet. Uh, we're going to hear router six. Okay, that looked weird, but I think that worked. Router four. And router five. No access list. No, 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 no. Let's do that again. Okay, that should go away. That's fine. That error should be should go away. Uh, router eight. Same thing. No, no. Guess I could put that anywhere. And router ten. We should turn off this capture. Okay. So right now this should work. If I do a join, join R6s to uh, loopback zero. Okay, first of all, they're trying to be a little sneaky here. We don't have our loopback in participating yet in IP multicast. So now it is. Now it's uh, participating in PIM. But then we don't want to do IP IGMP join group 239.666. Okay, so we could take this out and just paste this. Okay. Um, I'm thinking right now that this will actually work until we do the assert. So let's see. Let's go to router 10. Ping. Two three nine six six six. Yeah, we got a reply. So everything's great, all fine and good. Uh, but we're about to do this assert, and I'm not sure what the command is. Uh, I'm sure I'm going to assume it's an IPPIM command on the interface. Uh, not that, not that. Usage guideline, PIM assert. If a share tree, how the cycle of the sending of duplicate mode, it only lasts a couple of seconds because PIM assert mechanism, right? So how do I do the PIM assert? Um, let's see, PIM, let's do a search here, guys. I got another message.
Um, so the PIM assert, uh, DR election. Um, we're, I'm just going to do a search on that. I'm going to pull up Safari here. DPIM DR election. Best practice enterprise customers. Bullet through designated router. Uh, network lessons. Nope. Not going to happen. Uh, forward election. IPDM DR priority. Okay. I thought I saw that somewhere. So let's find that command. IPPIM. DR priority. Here we go. Set the privilege to use the IPM. So I'm assuming we want to set it to zero on the other routers. Uh, when a DR is candidate for election following, the router with the highest priority value configured interview will be elected. If the priority value is the same, then the router with highest IP address, right. So up until now, it's typically been router six. Router does not advertise the priority value, and it's the router is regarded as having the highest priority. Okay. So these are in the hello messages, right? Um, so let's let's give this a shot here. I think what we're going to want to do is let's see what the defaults are. Let's go to router six, show IP PIM um, neighbor maybe or interface probably. DR priority of one. Okay, so default is one. All we have to do is set it over here on router one to be like 10. So we'll say IP PIM DR priority 10. So let's do that on router one. Yeah, change from this to that. Okay. So now let's try to do this ping. Repeat under it. Okay, we seem to be getting a reply. Yeah, it seems to be okay before Trying to see who we got a response from last time. Sending time out. 15166. So the same. Okay. Seems to be working just fine. Underlying RPF issues. I don't see an RPF issue. Let's let's make sure this is taking the path we want. M trace 239666. Um oh. Wait a second. Source to select route from. Oh, okay. Gotcha. 151 10 10, I think. 155 1 10 10. And then destination 239 666. Querying full reverse path. That doesn't make any sense. Mtrace, that's the source. And the destination, 239666. Show IP interview brief. Yeah, there's no tunnel running here. 155 11010. Yeah. PIM MT. Five one ten ten slash thirty two. Negative one negative two. M trace. Host name or ABCD source to to trace the route from. 
151, 10, 10. Yeah, no, no route. Okay. That's not a multicast interface, but what if we did 108? Yeah, no, it has to be from here. Five. That's not the output I expected to see. So maybe there is some sort of problem here. Let's do a RPF check now. Show IP M route um, two thirty nine six six six. Oh, did it time out? Or am I using the wrong IP here? No, two thirty nine six six six. Yeah, okay, show IPM route. This is strange. So it looks like this is very unusual. This is not what I expected to see. Show run section IGMP. Yeah, 239666. Let's try from router 1. Ping 239666. Okay, M trace. Um, 151.146.1.239.666. Yeah, this is odd. Of course, I have not done this yet in in this lab here in Viral. So maybe this, I don't know. Uh, definitely not the output I'm I am expecting. But we're gonna check the reverse path just just to be sure. Um, I should have an S comma G here though. Well, I'll have an S comma G on the upstream router, right? Let's do a, let's do a repeat here. Let's just run this thing. Repeat. And let's go upstream and we're going to say show IP M route 9666. Yeah. So we've got several, of course. Um, I don't know where that comes from. But they're all pretty much the same timer. So this is the one I should be using. RPF neighbor passes. 1351-10810 is the RPF to the source, right? Actually, we should be doing an RPF check from router 6. I'm so used to doing it from router 10, but... Uh, we're going to do the show IP M route uh, 239666. And we should expect here this to be stopped. This is null, the incoming, because um, I'm a destination. But on our um, S comma G, here it is, 108.10. And, oh, here, look at this. So the RPF neighbor uh, incoming should be 151.146.4. And I think that is going to be a problem. Outgoing is nowhere, right? Because this is us. Let's look on router 4. This should be going to router 1, though. I'll bet it's pointing to router 1. Um, show IPM route, uh, 239.666. So here's the S comma G, and it is going to router 5 is the incoming, and the outgoing is this way. That looks right. We go to router 5, show IPM route. Um, 
Uh, star comma G, we're not using it. We're using the S comma G. Oh, it's got an outgoing. It's got two different interfaces and they're stopped. This RPF check passes though. So it looks like the RPF is correct, but we might be having issues of which interface to use. We've got two interfaces here, and we don't want two interfaces. So that's that may be why our trace is having problems. So it's interesting that even though these are some of the subtleties apparently from troubleshooting uh, multicast, because in this case, I think our RPF check underlying RPF issues. I don't see any underlying RPF issues. I see outgoing interface issues. And we don't really want this going out both interfaces. But since we have set the DR, I would think if you are configuring router one as your designated router to flood this um, shared segment, that you would want the traffic going to router one. And we've got to go into router one and to router four. So this is a case where I think we need an mroute here. And I think we do need to do IP mroute 39666. Um, Actually, what should this be? One static route. The only traffic we're trying to engineer here is this. So I'm going to do slash 32. And I'm trying to think, do we want to do the next hop? Or do we do the interface here? Yeah, what is it? Um, show I do show IV interface breathe. Uh, show do show is it IP RPF? Um, IP name or address of multicast source. Tunnel 10. I'm assuming it's going to be 155.115.1. So we're going to do IP MRoute 239.666. 5115.1 Invalid source address RPF neighbor address or route Um hmm what's our IP of our tunnel here show IP interface free ping 155.115.5 yeah Oh, are we not doing multicast here? Show run interface T10. We are IP PIM dense mode and a router five. Show IP PIM interfaces. Designated router zero IP address. There's no designated router, but it's point to point. Um, show IP PIM, are they neighbors? They are, 151.15.1. Okay, they're neighbors, so IP M route, 239.666. Invalid source, oh, invalid source address. Network mask. Invalid source address. Oh, that's not going to be the source address. Um, the source is going to be router 10. Uh, 
Sh so uh, IP M route. Let's do all. Fifteen dot one. Is that right? Okay. Well, that should fix it. Okay, we're still get. Let's see if we get replies now. No, we're not. Okay. Six underlying RPM join R six L zero loopback zero two three nine six six six. So now we're gonna do an M trace. This M trace appears to be use useless, um, unless I'm doing it wrong. M trace source. Let's do 108.10. Uh, destination of route. And then group to trace route via. Uh, can I just do two, three, nine, six, six, six? No, I tried that. Yeah. All right. So I need to. All right. I'm just going to go ahead and look at the lab guys and try to learn from this because it's getting close to lunchtime. So we get, we got to get somewhere. Okay, it's saying that I need to add the route on router one. So we're gonna find out why here in a minute. No IP and route. Yeah, it's saying on router one, Also, it does not have me doing, yeah, it didn't seem to make a difference. I was doing an assert on router one, and that didn't seem to do anything. Show run interface, uh, interface J0 146. Yeah, it doesn't have this. But it is saying here, if we want to make a router for the assert winner and at the same time fix the RPF issue, okay, if multiple MCAS routers share a single segment, which they do here, we've got three routers on a single segment, all of them could flood the segment with the same multicast traffic. For example, if R1 and R4 receive the same multicast flow, they will both send it to router 6. From router 6's point of view, both flows are the same with respect to RPF validation. Thus, traffic duplication occurs. So they could theoretically send... Traffic might be sent... Uh, I'm not sure how there's duplication there. Okay, I, I need to stop thinking in terms of unicast. So, in terms of multicast, from Router 5's perspective, it could look like I have receivers, even though it's the same receiver, but I have a receiver down both paths. We want to engineer the traffic so that it only uses one path. And this would be valid because router six is saying we'll do an RPF check to both 
and see, and it would allow traffic inbound um, on, from both of these neighbors, right? To avoid this situation, only one trouter is allowed to flood traffic on the shared segment. Okay, when a router detects someone is sending traffic for the same source, destination group, uh, then it immediately originates a PIM assert. This message contains the source IP, the group, and the path cost to the source. The path cost is a tuple, AD and metric, where AD is administrative distance routing protocol used to look up the source IP, and metric is the same protocol as metric to reach the source. The router with the lowest AD value wins the assertion. If the ADs are equal, metric is used as tiebreaker. If both the AD and the metric are the same, in this case, they would be. Um, router with the highest IP address wins, which would be router 4. Another router and segment receives the same assert message. Oh, so we can influence the administrative distance to change who wins this election. In, this, in our scenario, Router 1 and Router 4 run different IGPs. Is that right? Let's look. Show IP protocols. EIGRP 100, OSPF 1. Does Router 1 not run those same protocols? Show IP route. Uh, this is only using OSPF, so um, Router 4 should win this assertion by way of routing protocol. This is not a well-designed solution because you may want all routers to be under the same IGP. Yes, Router 4 would be the assert winner because EIGRP has a better AD than OSPF. So router one needs a static M route out its tunnel 10 to R5 to fix RPF issues. R1 will receive multicast traffic from 108.10 on its tunnel to -tunnel interface, but its IGP route to get to that source is via GI113. Ah, uh, okay. So one, step one is to make this more efficient. And step one is we want to select a single path instead of two paths. So this is done automatically by the protocol, right, via the DR election. So in the DR election, router four wins. Um, but we want router one to win the election, I think. Yeah, sure, router one is always elected. Okay, so we can do this a couple different ways to force the election here. Uh, one way is to just change, I thought I did that with the DR assert. I think the DR assert broke it though, didn't it? No, it did not break it. It did not break it. But I still can't trace this darn traffic. That must be a viral thing, uh, because if, can I see counters on the interface? Show IP PIM interface? No, show IP PIM. Somewhere I thought, should I be PIM neighbor? I thought I could see counters, should I be interface? Show counters? Show interface counters. That's all you can see. That's not much. Huh, other IP, blah, blah, blah. It doesn't even show um, 
Yeah, this worthless show interface GI zero one one forty six. Yeah, very limited here in viral what we can see compared to a real switch or real router. Yeah, not much. Um, can we do? Yeah. Okay. Carrying right along here. In our scenario, router one or four run different IGPs. If you wanted to make router four the assert winner and at the same time fix the RPF issue, we could use a distant argument at the end of the M route. On router one, something higher than router than ninety. We could do that. Oh, okay. All right. So we're going to put this, we're going to go ahead and put this in and then we'll analyze it. IP M route on router one. And by virtue of adding a static route, so up until now, we've been relying on um, the administrative distance of the routing protocol in use. So router 4 is using EIGRP, router 1 is using just OSPF. So router 4 wins. We could put an assert, and I guess that's what it's saying. We, could, we can put an assert here, but that causes an RPF issue. And I think that's what we did, right? We went to router one, um, and then we can no longer ping. Interface, GI0, 146. Um, IP, PIM, DR priority 10. Yeah, I think when we did that, we did change the path but then we created an RPF issue. No, it still works. So I don't know what RPF issue we're fixing here, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna take that out. Yeah, I'm not following the... That's okay, we're gonna put an M route here, IP M route. And in this case, it is, and, and I agree, this does both things. So anything coming from router 10, um, Anything coming the source, and this is what is throwing me off too, is the format of this M route. The source is this, the mask, and then they do tunnel 10. So this is kind of a reverse route. This does one thing, is it changes, um, Now if they do the RPF check, this should win because of a static route versus the um, versus the DR assert election. And it and it changes the routing at the same time. So now if we do here uh, show IPM route 239666 star comma 239666 oh, we're not running a ping let's run a ping and it's learning it's this via M route right <clears throat> and 
And the outgoing interface is this way, and it is assert winner, A. So we are now assert winner for this particular prefix, right? This particular group. And let's look at it from router force perspective. Show IPM route. 239666 and outgoing is through 146 so it's going to send it back to router 1 interesting so if it comes in a router um, <clears throat> if it comes in this way it's going to send it that way So router one will be preferred path, but this says prune. So P, yeah, it's set to prune. So we should only go this way now. Man, I want to see that M trace work. All right, I think we're gonna probably stop there, folks. Uh, it's about lunchtime, <clears throat> and I need to dissect this some more. So. I'm not, I'm not sure exactly what they had us doing here. I think I have a better idea, but I need to analyze this some more. I'm going to do that, and then we're going to come back hopefully this afternoon. And what do we got coming up? We have... <clears throat> Let's see. I can look on Discord because I sent this out earlier. Yeah, so we basically got <clears throat> sparse dense mode assert uh, except RP and DR election. So we're going to do some more with that, which is good. Uh, except register. Um, a few more labs before we get to auto RP, which we may not get today. But thanks for uh, tuning in, folks. Please join us on Discord if you haven't already. Uh, link is there. or on YouTube, uh, Facebook, Twitter. Instagram, you name it, we're on it. So uh, thanks for tuning in, folks, and happy laughing, happy learning. We shall see you back here at the Land Tamer Stream where we create happy uh, multicast trees. All right, talk to you all later. Thanks for stopping in.